today, we're gonna start working on power generation. And uh, we're gonna start pretty simple at first. Um, I really wanna work towards getting like power generation that is sustainable and will always be there and we can upgrade as we go. Um, I would dive into nuclear craft, but I think we need a sustainable power source that is better than what we have before we start work with uh, jumping into nuclear craft as all the ores for nuclear craft are of course in the beneath. And uh, if you guys don't remember what the beneath is like, uh, well, I recommend watching that video. Um, so anyways, uh, <laughs> since we got that out of the way, I think the nether is a much safer place for us to start working on things. So a builder from RF tools is probably gonna be the way to go about doing this. Um, and we can make a builder pretty simply. I mean, it's literally, I mean, it requires ender pearl. Of course, I need to grab a couple of ender pearls. Eventually, once we get this power set up, we're gonna upgrade our storage system as well. Um, right now, this will do. I think 64 ender pearls is plenty. <laughs> we have so many now. And I haven't even set up an ender pearl farm. We could use ender pearls as well. That, uh, that's another um, thing we could do. We can set up an exclusive ender, um, like an enderman generator right here to just constantly kill endermen. And we could use ender pearls as fuel um, for an ender pearl generator, which would work, would work. It actually generates quite a bit of power for very little effort. But I wanna go with lava for right now. Maybe we can add that to our bucket list. So another thing I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need some lava. So bucket of lava. What else was it? A bucket of water? I don't think I have a bucket of water, but I can grab one real quick. And then what, two extra buckets and then a shape card. And we need paper. Always need paper. Paper is, uh, man, just always, always paper is needed. All right, let's go ahead. I think it took the bucket out of my inventory, of course. And we'll head down here. I'm gonna grab my water real quick. There we go. I could have probably used a sink or something. <laughs> oh well. And we'll go ahead and throw this here. This is actually gonna be really, really easy to set up. We are gonna need a couple of buckets ourselves. And then what I love is in the, that is in this pack is Ender Storage is in here. So we can just make an Ender Tank. I've already made two of them. And uh, you get those Ender Tanks set up. Also you have Ender Chest. All of those things are super easy for item transportation but this is really good for fluids. Um, and then we're also gonna need some conduits, just some regular pressurized fluid conduits and we should be good. Now, what I'm gonna use for power is thermal and I'm gonna use a uh, magmatic dynamo. There is another thing you can use that is from extra utilities, but I think the mag magmatic dynamo will uh, be the best for generating power for right now. Um, the upgrade system is very easy to understand. Of course, when we're going to go through the thermal upgrade system as we progress along and, uh, you know, get this thing going. Uh, we do need Invar. We have pretty much everything in order to make this. Now, I'm going to need, um, for right now, I'm going to need one that is going to power our, bu our builder. And that's going to provide the power to the builder first. And we can use these conduits in a specific way to make sure that this magmatic dynamo receives enough lava and then the extra goes to the ender tank. And then of course, we are going to need another one of these. This is going to be what generates the power and we can have quite a few of these actually. I think I have quite a bit of invar. So now that we have this set up, we also need a lever just for the, uh, the builder. And I mean, I, we're pretty much ready to go. I mean, uh, we just need to make sure we're safe. Um, my shuriken always comes in handy. So we can go ahead and uh, go to the nether. Now that we are in the nether, we need to find a nice lava location. Like right down here should be pretty good. Get rid of this guy. I hate those guys. They're like, what did they do wrong to me? Man, the music is so bad here. Um, So right away, let's go ahead and get the, I'm gonna set this a little bit of away from the lava. It doesn't have to be on the lava. And um, let's go ahead and get a general location set for this thing. So you can right click this on here. And then I need to set my first position, which I'm probably going to set way over here. Why not? I can make this a pretty large area for right now. First area. And then come over here and find myself another really large area. Make sure I have enough boost to get there. How about all the way 
over here. Why not? All right, so with our location set, we should be able to uh, hop down here and get our uh, lava generation going. All right, so when I place this in here, go ahead and place it in here, um, we can go ahead and highlight this area to see where it's at <laughs> and kill these guys in the process. I want to take this height and drop it down. Um, so the offset is set pretty high. Let's go ahead and take this uh, 10 and we'll make it 20. And then I'll make this offset negative 10 for right now. Let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's do negative 13. And let's just see what that translates to. So I can't see it now. Let's try negative 10. I want to be able to at least see it popping up a little bit. Let's try negative 5. Am I going the right direction? I think I am. There we go. That's negative 5. So I'm probably going to just drop this down negative three. Am I going the right direction? Wrong direction. So negative eight. It's like I just kind of guess as I'm going through here. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Take it down negative nine. I think we'll leave it one block above, which is plenty for me. Meaning that if I take it one more down, then we know that negative ten is exactly where it needed to be. Perfect. All right. So, now that that's not showing anything, we know that the, the range is quite large and it's going to cover this whole area. We need to actually feed this machine. So, I'm going to place this. Um, I'm going to try and place it in a direction where it'll actually face the machine. There we go. Since I have both of them, might as well get that to use. There we go. And we only need one. And so, what I need to do is take the fluid that is going to be generated out of here. And make sure we have enough. I don't think it's actually going to go directly into this. And I don't, if I remember correctly, it's not going to pump. It's not even going to pump directly into the pressurized conduit, I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, I forgot. We're going to need a tank. And I think I'm going to go with the Ender IO tank. So I'm going to head back. I'm going to go ahead and set a location here. And call this lava? And then just, uh, yeah, save a location. That way I know how to get back to here. And I'm going to go get a tank real quick. So I ended up getting myself an iron drum. I think that's going to be plenty. Yeah, that's going to work just fine. And uh, once this is turned on, things are going to start working just fine. We need to lead this to here. And then lead it into our ender tank. So I can set that right here. And just make sure this is going to be going to here next so this goes here first and then here and we'll set this to extract always active insert insert hopefully and, and that should work it should work fine next task is let's go ahead and get this set up let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on we place the lava in here that should feed this which should start feeding this and that's going to start building up a little bit of power in here not much but enough and that's exactly what we want. We want this to be filled with lava. And it looks like it's going to like split the lava, which is fine. There we go. And that should be, what, full now? Yeah, basically full. And uh, let's just go ahead and turn the lever on. Flip this on. That's going to start pumping. That's not enough power. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the power amount wasn't adjusted. It's probably never going to have enough power but should start to fill this up once it reaches a certain point. Um, let's see. Is it actually moving at all? The power is building up, but it's not actually moving anywhere. Uh, excuse me. Oh, there it went. It did something because it just consumed some power. But hopefully, hopefully this works. I don't, I don't think anything was modified with the builder, um, but it does need to scan this large area before it starts pumping. Yeah, this is a really good use of a builder. I'm going to monitor it for a little bit of time and just make sure that this is filling up. It does already look like it is, so we should be good. Now, um, make sure that you go into your settings. Now, this you can only do this in a single player world. I'm going to go ahead and claim the area that the builder's in. It, it'll it automatically claim this area anyways that it's loaded. Um, I'm just going to claim the area that the builder's in. I'm going to chunk load it. And then everything else should say chunk loaded. 
the builder will chunk load the places that it's gonna be draining from. So to help store the power that we're generating, let's go ahead and actually utilize some of that lead that we have and uh, put it to good use. Now I am going to have to make a couple of different things. Um, with thermal, you have to make electrum, which is gonna be gold and silver. So let's go ahead and pull those things out, gold and silver. And then there's bronze. Actually, I don't have much silver. Ooh, I should probably farm a little bit for that. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's go light on that. <laughs> I need to farm for some more sil silver. It looks like, and I need enough silver stored up so that way I can uh, go ahead and make a um, divining rod for it. That way I can easily find it. I have a little bit here. Let's go ahead and throw that in here so I can get that processed up. Um, so we have a little bit of electrum that's going to help us out. We also need bronze. And uh, the bronze ingot should be made with uh, copper and tin. So copper and tin, it's going to be made. It's super easy to throw it in our alloy smelter. We have tons of tin. And we'll just make a little bit of this. This is going to get us our first upgrades as well. Bronze is going to be used a lot. And I kind of want to upgrade these machines quickly. So this is going to be our power room for right now. It is just right next to everything. Right underneath um, our main setup. And uh, how I'm going to set these up, let's go ahead and throw them over here. So I'm going to place them against the wall. This is, of course, going to change. Go ahead and place this. I don't know, throw some torches up on the wall here. Got to have a little bit more light. These need to be rotated. They are currently upside down for how I want them. There we go. All facing downwards. And then at the very top, I'm going to place this, which seems to be doing pretty good. You can see right there. And that's going to allow me just to hook the conduit up simply with the three that we have. That should work fantastic. Going to go ahead and set this to extract always active. That should, of course, throw everything into here. I also forgot to turn my ring on. There we go. And just I want to make sure that these are all set to insert and not extracting. Just so they're all ready to go. Um, our energy cell can go down here right now. And then uh, I'm just going to smack this on here and get that bad boy filling up and that is going to start storing some energy now i can pull energy out of this by whacking one of the sides on this not this side did not mean to do that rotate this i think oh i have to access it from here so there we go and i'm gonna make the orange side an access port um now you will use the hammer for things like this disconnecting this power connection that way i'm not connected to this i'm actually connected to the battery that way we use that buffer there. And then this right here, of course, will start to build up power and then we can start to route our power and get it kind of going, not in a loop, but get it to filling this back up because this is actually running everything. So GPS and we're good to go. So we'll set the GPS on this battery, which will also be another storage, but it's storing the power there. And we should be ready to rock and roll. That's gonna start sending all that power out. This holds by default 2 million and uh, can be upgraded. So speaking of upgrades, this right here is only producing 40 RF per tick. So we're not producing as much as we can out of these. They can be upgraded four times and each time they will significantly increase in power. They will end up overall max upgrading. They'll be producing almost um, a thousand RF per tick a piece whenever you get lava going into them. So how to upgrade. That's where the thermal kits come in handy. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab those. So I'm gonna need a couple bits of bronze here. I'm gonna make three upgrade kits for this main. And you can also upgrade your um, your thermal ba uh, power sort of backup. Um, what am I trying to say? The, uh, <laughs> the thermal, um, wow, energy cell. I don't know why I was going blank on that. Um, so yeah, you can also upgrade that with these as well. So that's how you're gonna need to do that. All right, I think we got just about everything done. Let's go ahead and grab this now. Um, there's also augments. So once you upgrade, you're gonna open up an augment slot. And normally for machines and things that are gonna be processing things, you wanna use auxiliary reception coils. But since we're working with lava, this right here is uh, increases your output on the dynamos. And so that's exactly what we want. We wanna go with the um, auxiliary transmission coils. Gonna use silver, luckily we just Got some, had some silver um, being worked up over here. Go ahead and speed that up a little bit. So we have this going. 
There we go. That should be a little bit more silver because we were definitely running out and this is definitely silver heavy. So three of those and then we'll make the augments. Perfect. And this is all going to be great because um, when we start working around next episode and so we really need to push for automating resource generation or automating resource gathering and we need a bit of power for that. So let's go ahead and get these hardened kits upgraded or these dynamos upgraded and we can also slap the augments into them. And remember we were at 40 now we're at 120 a piece, right? So it's looking pretty good. Now we probably want to upgrade the dynamo. Um, that's at the other one uh, as well. That's in the nether. So I'm just going to use a regular kit for that one. Let's see. I don't think, I don't know if I'm going to use an augment on it. I'm, you know what? I probably will use an augment on it. Um, cause I think it deserves one as well. So we'll throw a kit and if we have enough, we can throw it another augment on it as well. And that should hold it for a while. So I'm going to head back to the nether, plop this on there and we should be good. Right? Should be pretty good to go. So apparently there's another way that I can try and uh, go about getting lava. Um, other than this method, this method is one way, but there is another method and it does require power in itself, but I don't think it's going to be more power than um, what it takes to produce the sheer amount of lava that it can do. Um, so what we need to find through all that noise. Oh, we're going to die. Oh, wow. We did not die from that. I am super blown away that we did not die. Oh, here's what I need right there. Uh, avoid the TNT creeper. Let's get that fixed. <laughs> That's why I fell. Oh man. Okay. So we need to grab this guy, a berserker, because this guy drops pretty much everything we need. He really does. And what we can do is throw this guy in our mob farm, which of course also uses a little bit of power, but I don't think it's going to be, like I said, more than uh, what we can actually get lava producing from it. So this is going to be a cool experience, uh, experiment. I want to place this in here. I want to see how good this actually works. Plus it'll also generate me some experience. How well does it kill these guys? And it should drop some blaze powder. That's exactly what I want to see. Oh man. That produces a good amount quickly. A lot of blaze powder from that. Everything else we can trash. I just want the blaze powder. All right. Oh man. Okay. So basically let's take a look at lava here. And I noticed the squeezer gives us lava, right? And can give us a good amount. Um, nether rat can also give us a good amount, but blaze powder is probably the way to go since we can make this really quickly. Look at that. It's just flooding in there. Now all this other stuff, of course, we can go ahead and throw away. Let's turn this off for right now and uh, let's work on all the things that it's going to take in order to uh, get this mechanical squeezer up. So the squeezer is from um, Integrated Dynamics. Yes, it's from this mod. Um, so we should be able to make the regular, just basic squeezer, which is an iron block and a little bit of wood, which I'm surprised is not letting it work. Wood, any wood should work. There we go. So there's the squeezer. Now we need to upgrade to the mechanical squeezer, which I think we have everything to do. We, we should have everything to be able to make a mechanical squeezer. We just need the batteries. So we need four of these, I think. Make this a little bit of redstone. Blocks, redstone. How am I out of redstone? I have no idea. But we're definitely out. I'm gonna have to go get some more of that soon enough. Okay, squeezer. So uh, this will also require a little bit of power as well to get these set up. So there's two of those and we should have ourselves a mechanical squeezer. So all we need to do is feed the items into there. So feeding the, uh, the specific items we need item transfer pipe, and I'm probably going to use an item transfer node similar to the one that we are using or we're, we're using. Um, basically it's wireless item transfer, which should work. Ender chest should also work. Let's see. Do 
I have enough for an ender chest? This particular ender chest? No, I don't have the blaze rod. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the stuff required for all of that. And we're going to set it up in here and see if I can't get lava producing up here. So setting this, setting this up should be pretty easy. We have an item transfer node up here. I went ahead and placed an item conduit and I placed an item filter in here. Now you can actually place the item in here if you want to, or you can search like blaze powder and actually drag the item in. If you didn't know that was a thing, it's really handy and allows you to set filters without having the items. Um, so now that we have that done, set that to always active and extract and set this to insert. And we should start seeing blaze powder fill this area. Now I need this over here set up. Let's go ahead and get some power to it because this does require a little bit of power. We'll make sure the wrench is set. And then we also need to make sure this is set to orange so it expels power into here. Power is built up. We should be ready to go. Let's get our GPS set up. So that way it will start producing once we put this in here. There we go. And it should start squeezing this stuff up. And we should start seeing lava build up. There we go. Lava is being built. That is perfect. And uh, I don't think I have any more fluid conduits, but I do have fluid lasers, which will work perfect. Let's take these. I want a drum. And I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, set these up. Let's get a um, compass because that's how this all works. And we're going to get this uh, all hooked together laser wrench and uh, yeah. So eventually we will hook this up. Right now I'm gonna use this as a storage for lava. And then I'll eventually hook this into the system. But for right now, this is going to work just fine. We'll hook this here and here. That could actually, no, this isn't gonna work. We'll shut that off. And let's go ahead and connect these two. Bam, and then we'll set this one to only into adjacent blocks, only out of adjacent blocks. And that should pull out all the lava from here. Send it right up there. And then we turn this on. And we should start getting the things we need. Um, I do want to destroy a lot of the uh, junk items. Everything except for this. So the way I could do that is put a trash can here. And I think that would work. Put it, Yeah, we set a priority system up. Where that's priority one. Um, even though I really don't want to get rid of blaze rods, but I mean, it is what it is. That should work. I do want to take these blaze rods. We can always add bla bra uh, blaze rods later to this system. I'm going to let it run until this chest fills up, but I mean, it does work. We could even use a crafter to automatically cr uncraft these things as well. Yeah, this, this tank will be full of lava in no time. That's crazy. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I know it was a lot of tech and not as much adventuring, but we do need to get power going so that way we can further our expansions in this ma magnificent world. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to click that like button and uh, also click that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed and ring that beautiful notification bell as it will let you be notified when I do publish new videos so you don't miss out on uh, an awesome episode. Guys, I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.